Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with the third and final part of the order tutorial. Now, if you follow parts one and two, you should have something that looks a little bit like this, which is our animated text, our wax seal, and our parchment background. So in this final part, I'll be just wrapping it up with a couple of final effects, uh, namely the light ray, the camera work, and some rising dust particles. Now just the quick reminder, I'll be posting the project file for this on my website at shortformvideo.com. So if you just want to skip this and go straight to the good stuff, you'll be able to download it for free from there. So let's get cracking. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is create a quick light ray effect. Now if you watch one of my previous tutorials, um, I think it was the Sands of Time tutorial, you'll see there's a nice easy way of doing this, and that's to create a brand new solid. And we'll pick a nice kind of dark greeny gray. And we'll call this light ray. And just hit OK. Go to your pen tool. And just create a quick mask that's about the shape of the light ray you want to create. Now by default, um, the mask that's created is an add mask. We want to change that to a subtract mask. So go to your light ray layer. Tap M to bring up the mask properties and just swap it from add to subtract, just reverse it. And while we're there, we're going to increase the feather value of the mask significantly, probably up to about 200 pixels. And now you can play around with the expansion until you get a look that you like. Now that's actually coming through quite dark, so I'll uh, just drop the opacity down to about 85. And that looks much better. Okay, the next step is to create our um, rising dust motes. Now, typically speaking, I'd normally rely on something like Trap Code Form for this, but in keeping with my uh, trend to avoid using third-party plugins, I'll just be uh, using a pre-existing plugin, but uh, tweaking it to my needs. So go to your Effects and Presets panel and type CC Snow to find the CC Snow effect, and just drop that onto your Light Ray. And you'll see that it creates this, rather surprisingly, Snowfall effect. Now to turn that into something that looks a little bit more like slowly rising dust motes, we just need to uh, tweak the effects a little bit. So go up to your Effect Controls panel, and change the speed value to minus 0.05. So it's really, really slow. Now if I just scrub through the timeline, You'll see that now, instead of falling down, our snowflakes are actually rising up. The second thing you'll note is they're also wobbling from side to side, so we actually want to uh, stop that from happening. So we'll drop the amplitude down to 0.3 and the frequency down to 0.3 as well. And that'll just calm down the motion without killing it completely. And uh, just one more point, there's far too many of them on screen for my liking. So I'm going to drop the amount down to 50. And that'll keep the effect fairly subtle without overdoing it. Obviously, uh, if you're doing this yourself and you feel you want more particles, and uh, you know who you are, uh, you can add as many particles as you like. Okay, so that's our light ray and our dust motes created. A um, couple of final touches. I'd actually like to add two things. Um, one's a little vignette, so I'm going to create another new solid. Same color as the last one. And I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and just draw a simple ellipse over the project. Swap it from add to subtract. And like we did with the light ray, going to feather it and expand it just to give it a little bit of vignetting. I might drop the opacity down and bring the expansion back in. There, that looks a little bit better. And also I want to create a fade to black at the beginning and end points. Now one of the simplest ways to do that is to create yet another new solid. This time we're going to make it solid black. I'll call it fade in and out. 
with the timeline indicator at the beginning of the timeline. You want to hit T to bring up the opacity value. Hit a keyframe on the opacity. Hit Shift and Page Down to advance 10 frames. Create another keyframe and set that to 0. Then hit the End key to take it to the end of the composition. Create another keyframe. Increase it to 100% to make it fully black. Hit Shift and Page Up to reverse by 10 frames. Add another keyframe and drop that to 100%. And all that will do is create a nice, simple fade in and fade out. Now, something else you might want to do before we skip to the last step is to create a new adjustment layer. Find your Curves tool. And you can play with the Curves value to create the look that you're after. So once you're satisfied with the general look, feel and animation settings of your parchment background uh, composition, we'll just finish it off with a nice little bit of uh, camera animation. Now to do that we're going to go to the project panel, grab the parchment background project, which is the one we're working on, and just drag it onto the composition button to create a new composition with the parchment background comp nested in it. I'll just hit Ctrl and K and rename it Camera Comp. And then I will turn the parchment background composition that's nested inside it into a 3D layer. Now it hasn't actually changed anything yet, but uh, turning it into a 3D layer means that we can now apply a camera to it, which is exactly what this step is all about. So uh, right click, select New and Camera. Now you can stick with the 50mm uh, setting, which is the one I like to work with because there's less distortion on it, but uh, by all means play around with the uh, wide angle and zoom settings to see if they uh, provide a more pleasing result for what you're after. And just hit OK. Now that we've got this, you can see that uh, you can now manipulate this layer in 3D space, but always be aware when you're working with pseudo 3D objects like this wax seal here, that uh, subtlety is very much the watchword because the more you play around with the 3D environment the more obvious it is that any pseudo 3D objects in this space are actually two-dimensional and have no depth. So I'll just uh, reset that camera. So to recreate the uh, track out effect I had in my original project we just want to create three keyframes at the beginning of the timeline in the camera. So uh, first one's point of interest, second one's position, and the third one is zoom. Now you start off by uh, adjusting the zoom to take yourself in nice and close with the T. Now remember you can hold down the shift key to make it a little bit faster. It takes up in increments of 10. Now we're going to take the uh, point of interest value and adjust the X and Y until the T is smack in the middle. And we'll advance to the two second mark and just hit the reset link on the camera settings. And that will create a nice basic track out animation. And the one final thing we want to do to uh, make the animation just a little bit smoother is turn these two keyframes into Easy Ease In. And that basically just softens off the velocity so we get a nice smooth deceleration into the final keyframe. So uh, select your keyframes, right click, go to Keyframe Assistant and hit Easy Ease In. And that'll just slow things down and make it a nice soft finish. OK, back to the parchment background, tap the fade in and out, back on, and that's it, you're ready to render. So there you have it, our um, Knights Templar style intro, um, complete with parchment, wax seal, animated calligraphic text, and a simple camera track animation. Um, just the reminder, the project file for this is available for free download at my website, shortformvideo.com. As always, I hope you found this useful. 
Um, look out for another tutorial coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.